cup of joe. As the alt season comes and goes, we see groups of altcoins exploding left and right. How do you find out? How do you choose? How do you figure out which group of altcoins will pump? Well, this comes down to the crypto narratives. The masters of all the fundamentals and all the research, those able to anticipate market sentiment, base it all on the narratives. Welcome, Gains Nation. Today, we'll be talking about the best altcoins for each narrative and how to spot them. So, let's start with identifying the different narratives that can play out. As a fundamental and analyst, we look at many different things when anticipating which group, which group of altcoins are about to pump. So, when it comes to coin launches, coin listings, updates from for their main nets, for their test nets, we got hard forks, we had coin burns. All of these are grouped into one section of the fundamental pumps for what the analysts look for. The rest and the others, this comes from the narratives. Now, what drives a market when it comes to narratives? Well, this could be major events or catalysts brought up on by mainstream media. For example, the SEC making a ruling against certain cryptocurrencies like XRP. This could be adoption by a nation like El Salvador adopting Bitcoin. This could be major financial institutions finally adopting and investing in large cap altcoins like Ethereum. But really, let's get down to the details and identify these narratives. So just to name a few, the most often talked about are the Ethereum killers. So what are these? These are the different ecosystems, more commonly known as layer one solutions, that allow developers to build on top of. So through coins such as Cardano, Phantom, Polkadot even, new developers and technological experts are able to, are able to build projects, right? So when the narrative goes to these layer ones, we normally look for the blue chip assets. Cardano at little over $2, 2.20 has been one of the strongest hype coins for this past year, but really it's been underperforming. So with L1s, I would still look at Cardano, but let's talk about the rest. Solana, which had, what, 75x this year already in 2021 alone. Can that still run by a lot based on its market cap? I believe so, yes, but, but how much more? If you're looking for best gains, are you still gonna stick to Solana? Now that it's ranked 6 on market cap. Scrolling down, there's Polkadot, which isn't really a layer 1. It's more of a layer 0, and we'll talk more about that later. But when it comes to Ethereum killers or competitors, Polkadot's always mentioned. And even at rank 8, with a market cap of $46 billion, I believe it has a long way to go. Terra, which is sort of like a mixture of DeFi, mixture of layer 1, it's kind of in its own planet. One of our favorites here at the Gains Nation community. Um, but yeah, we'll give that a nod. Rank 12, there's Avalanche. Avalanche, sorry. Which also made a strong run. And I believe it has ways, ways to go. But, you know, let's look for coins that we believe has big moves left in it. So, there are people that may or may not mention Tron. For me, I think that Phantom will be there. Tezos, it's part of the layer one narrative, layer one group, but it's not really one that I would consider to be a market mover. So for you guys out there who are looking for safe investments, I'll go for Ada and Polkadot. And if you want a little bit of risk and you want some gains, it's got to be Phantom. If you want to be in between safe and high gains, it's got to be a battle between Avalanche and Luna. My favorite, of course, would be Luna. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? We have Layer 2s. So what are Layer 2 solutions? These are projects that are ones. When it comes to these, I'll be quick. The blue chip and the number one market mover and market share holder would be Matic, Polygon. And you'll know that 
the layer 3s will move much much when Matic starts to run. So after Matic, you can expect coins like OMG, um, LRC, and Zilliqa to make some movements. And those are the only coins you really have to think about. I know there are some other low caps out there, but really, I wouldn't even bother. You want to be safe and have decent gains? Matic still has a 10x. You want to have a little bit of risk and you want 20x gains? It could be OMG, but with these higher risk coins, it could be 20x, but it could be just 2x. So hedge your risk tolerance over there. What else? There are meme coins, but they normally go towards the end of the bull market. So here we have Doge, we have Shiba, and Floki. So if, if I were to invest in a meme coin, I'd probably have to go for Floki. Um, SHIB and Doge already made their run, already got their hype. Yeah, they still have a 2x or 3x in them, but if you really want those massive gains for these last for this last quarter of 2021, I'll have to go for Floki. Next we have Oracles. So I'm not a fa I'm not a huge fan of the Oracles. Um, primarily because they move so so slow. And this is exemplified by their main blue chip, which is Chainlink. So yeah, I think Chainlink still has a 3x, 4x in it, and it's definitely a safe asset, especially as it's one of the most highly adopted coins out there. But if you want gains, you're going to have to look for coins such as Band, um, maybe Die. I have to look into deeper into this, but um, when people start talking about Oracles, it's really the top two, which is Link and um, Band. So some people, you know, when they're discussing it, they pitch in a little bit of TRB, um, a little bit of, uh, what else would be a good Oracle? API 3, Charlie 3 even. But those are like, you know, low cap, high risk, high reward that for a beginner, you might not want to go too deep into. So we've mentioned three, layer one, layer two, oh, four, sorry, meme coins and oracles. Let's jump into the next one, DeFi. So with DeFi, the reputation of um, Compound has been tarnished by the recent hack and the response by their CEO. So they've lost a lot of trust in the market. When it comes to DeFi, Luna is still a coin that's very involved. Yes, I know I mentioned Luna earlier while talking about the layer ones, but you know, with USD being super decentralized and everything, USD is a stable coin in the Terra ecosystem, by the way. I think that even in a DeFi run, Luna is going to have the huge pump. This is why I really think that even as a blue chip top 15 coin, Luna has 10 to 20x potential. But what else outside of Luna? There's Aave, which is the biggest player in all of DeFi. Um, and you're going to want to look at the exchanges. One inch and Uniswap, they're good ones. Uniswap, it has about a 6x, I believe, if the market really goes up, blow off top, Bitcoin to 100k. Um, and it's one inch that I think would have some crazy, crazy gains, especially with the crypto ban in China. And we are hearing news that a lot of their users are moving into one inch. We're probably going to see a big move by one inch, you know. So that's my pick for DeFi. Um, there's interoperability, which is the hottest topic outside of NFTs when it comes to, uh, <laughs> when it comes to narratives. Um, with interoperability, you know, it's kind of interesting um we have polka dot which is not really a blockchain but they call it some form of substrate technology where they connect different types of uh, chains this is where the terms multi-chain comes from basically connecting different types of technologies so that they can you know like the word suggests interoperate so polka dots a big player there um you'll see VeChain, which I know is under logistics, but theoretically speaking, it's an IoT, Internet of Things project. And I think one of the main projects, even though I used to be a hater due to its tokenomics, is going to have to be Atom. Yeah. 
So Atom with IBC connecting the different uh, ecosystems using a specific exchange with Osmosis and everything, Osmo. I think that when the interoperability narrative comes, Atom is a safe coin with big gains ahead. Obviously, if you're part of my community, you know very well that I'm a big, big fan of VeChain. Um, and I think VeChain has a 10 to 15x from here. So regardless of the narrative, I know VeChain's going to move. And the very, very last big narrative that we can discuss is probably, I would say, man, I'm at a loss for words here. Um, NFT gaming, NFT gaming. So Axie has been the industry leader when it comes to NFT gaming, AXS. It's ran so much. Um, it's been at all-time highs every month of 2021 or mid to late 2021. It's hard to say where its top is going to be. At $126, it started at around 6 to $8, I believe. I don't know if I want to be invested in Axie or have too much exposure, especially because there's so many other games out there, or at least so many other coins related to NFT gaming. There's Engine, which is one of the safer picks. It's so, so far from its all-time high, and the technology is so good that only one gaming company needs to adopt it, and it can launch up again. Um, and then there are the new projects. Um, we know Illuvium. It's not that new, but very, very huge potential. There's Wilder Worlds, Wild. Um, and the rest, you know, UFO and all these other low caps. For me, they're a little bit high risk, high reward, so you're going to have to look into them. But when it comes to managing your risk and still getting good gains, Illuvium, Wild, those are some of the favorites we have. Engine as well. Um, there's also going to be a time where the narrative is going to be pushed into exchanges, but really it's a minor narrative that's going to go along with all the others. Um, KuCoin, uh, KCS token, BNB token, FTT, um, from the FTX exchange. CRO, not so much, but it could have a move itself. All these coins will pump as the odd season comes. And lastly, there's the database narrative. I mean, really, it's the everything else narrative, you know. And this is when we talk about CFI with Cake and XRP and XLM um, and all those centralized finance there's also data which is you know with coins such as arweave um coins such as rune and then there's also the security narrative so how do you identify these nar these narratives well all you have to do is subscribe to crypto with joe we have a free telegram channel where we talk about all the fundamentals it's on telegram um all you have to do is message crypto with joe or shoot us a message from twitter and we'll link you up we also have our paid groups not trying to plug it too much, but you guys know how it is. So again, those are the narratives. We have layer one, layer two, quote unquote Ethereum killers, right? We have oracles, we have DeFi, we have CeFi, we have meme tokens, we have interoperability and much, much more. Again, when the money flows into the alt season, there's gonna be two sets of waves. The first one, it's gonna be Bitcoin to Ethereum to large cap, mid cap, low caps. This is the money flow for alt season. But within that, it's going to be narratives that selects which group of coins pump at the same time. Not all coins pump at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. You got to find the right ones. And you got to know how to invest before the green candles are there so that you can sell and reallocate. Remember, we sell the green and we buy the red. Again, my name is Joseph Gates, and this has been an overview on crypto narratives. See you guys next time. Cup of Joe.